I realized that all of the symptoms that most people categorize as like, this is, this comes with ADHD or being ADHD or being neurodi neurodivergent. I realized that my mom would actually use those and, and like use that to program me to believe that that's a good thing. For example, my mom would always tell me how smart I was. Like I never doubted my intelligence. That's something that I never had to doubt in my life because thankfully my mom told me that enough times where I believe that. And our parents are like gods as children. We absorb everything like sponges that our parents tell us. So if your parent keeps telling you, hey, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're lazy, you're going to grow up believing you're lazy even if you're not. If your parents say you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid, even if you're not, you're going to believe it, right? So who knows? Like maybe I'm not that smart, but my mom always told me like you're smart, you're smart, you're smart. So I've never doubted my intelligence. She told me I'm an insanely fast processor, like on a genius level of processing, which comes with being ADHD. And so she like picked all of these symptoms, all of these things that would make me different from other kids or would make my brain you know, different from how other people's brains worked. And she used that to program me to believe that these are superpowers and these are good things. And I've realized over the years that I've used those skill sets, essentially tools, skill sets, gifts, whatever you want to call it, the, the innate things that come with the way my brain is wired. And I flooded that into my manifestation journey. Those are the things that have made my manifestation journey the way that it is. The reason why I'm even in the career that I'm in right now is because of my ability to be able to hyper focus and hyper fixate on something, which is an ADHD quality, um, and really be a master researcher and dive into every single fucking detail about spirituality and manifestation and law of attraction. And that fascinated the shit out of me. So of course I had even more hyper-focus, hyper-fixation, obsession, 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 obsession. And the reason why I have such a successful career nowadays in the realm of manifestation, spirituality, law of attraction, and coaching is because of this quality that I was told was a really good thing. So I grew up believing that all the symptoms that made me neurodivergent is the reason why I was so gifted and talented and even put into gifted classes. I remember I was in very specific classes, which I think in retrospect, maybe we're all the other ADHD kids <laughs> together, but we were just never told that, right? We were just told we're like special in the sense of like we're talented and gifted and whatnot. And so it's really interesting for me, like how my mom essentially pulled an Albert Einstein on me. I don't know if you know this story. And I don't know if the story is true. Some people say it's true. Some people say it's not true. I like to believe it's true because at least for someone out there in the world, it's probably a true story. Like I'm sure it came from somewhere, whether it was associated with Albert Einstein or not. But let's just pretend the story is true and I'm just going to quickly tell it. So when Albert Einstein was nine years old, he was kicked out of school. He came home from school with a letter and he gave his mom a letter because he couldn't read. And so his mom read the letter and the mom read the letter to herself and with with tears in her eyes, she read the letter out loud to Albert Einstein. And what she said was, hey, Albert, the letter says that you are way too smart for the school. In fact, your intelligence is so high and you're such a genius and you're such an incredible student and you're such a fast learner that the school cannot keep up with you. The teachers have nothing to teach you. So the teacher is telling me to pull you out of school so that I can be your teacher because I don't think that the school can teach you what it needs to teach you. And so I'm going to take you to the pace that you need to be at. And so essentially she pulled him out of school told him it's because he's so smart. And um, Albert grew up, right, believing that and was homeschooled, I guess, by his mom or something like that. And then after his mom passed away, the story or so the story says, he found the letter and he read the letter from the school. And what the letter actually said was your son is mentally incapable of learning. He doesn't understand anything. He doesn't comprehend anything. He's so stupid that we have to kick him out of school. And so you're going to have, you're on your own, buddy, right? Like you're on your own to teaching him because we're not going to accept, you know, such a stupid kid or whatever it said. Okay. I'm just paraphrasing here, you guys. 
Again, the story could not be true, but I like to believe it's true. So then he realized, oh my God, all of these inventions, all of these scientific advancements, all of these explorations that Albert Einstein is, you know, accredited to or, or that we give credit for, his discoveries, all of those things might have not been possible if he grew up believing the actual letter and what the actual letter told his mom and what the teachers believed to be true about him. If he actually listened to what the teacher said, he may have not ever accomplished the incredible advancements that he ended up accomplishing. Like we look back at Albert Einstein as a genius of our time or the times before us, I guess. I don't even, this is so embarrassing, but does anyone know when he actually was alive and died? <laughs> because right now I don't. But anyway, that's besides the point. So I was like, mom, you pulled a fucking Albert Einstein, Einstein on me. And she's like, I know. And, you know, my mom even told me like, you know, as parents, you don't know if you're doing the right thing. I don't know if I was doing the right thing. I just took a risk and I just decided that that's not actually going to help you, especially now that I think back and look back, right? I think that now people are recognizing that ADHD is a superpower and that there's all these positive things to it. And there's so many tools and help that people can get with managing the symptoms and the things that make like the day to day life a little bit harder than for most people. Um, but back then, I don't think that there was as many tools or as many resources or as much support. So who would have known how I would have grown up? Like, for example, um, you know, some of the people that I know that were diagnosed with ADHD as kids and were told that as kids, they had to go on medication and they were told that they're like unruly and can't be contained and have trouble sitting down and have trouble focusing and that they're, you know, not as smart as other kids or whatever. And it's interesting because I even told my mom, like, well, maybe just maybe the fucking traditional school system was boring as fuck. So maybe that was the root cause. <laughs> maybe that was the actual problem. Maybe it wasn't the fact that these kids were neurodivergent. Maybe it's because school should be inclusive of all different brain types. Hmm. Let's think about that for a second, right? But anyway, my point is, is I didn't grow up believing that I had some disability. I didn't believe that I wasn't destined for success because of the way my brain was wired or that I would never amount to anything because I mixed up numbers in school, which happened all the fucking time. Now I look back in retrospect and I'm like, oh my God, the amount of numbers I've mixed up on math tests, which is dyscalculia, dyscalculia, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, that makes sense. Or, you know, I spent most of my time staring out the window in class. I spent most of my time daydreaming. I lived such a crazy imagination as a kid. I couldn't tell you anything that I learned in school. Like I, it's like memories of school. I remember sitting at a table with kids, but I remember just being in my own imaginary land for most of the time. Right. And, you know, I, I don't look at it as like, um, that I would never amount to anything because I hated how boring school was or because I was overly sensitive or I remember being a very sensitive kid. In fact, I'm still a very sensitive kid inside of me. You know, I'm still very like sensitive to lights and sounds and and things like that. And I'm like, huh, this makes so much fucking sense, mom. Like, thank you so much for revealing this finally to me, not because it's going to change my life drastically or anything like that, but it's just I finally can make sense of things. So I didn't grow up with the label, you guys. And I think that that served me in such an incredible way. And I think that that just goes to show you, like, be really careful with what labels you associate with. Be really careful with what diagnoses you associate with. Be really careful with what stories people tell you around what this means. And again, I'm not saying that there's something inherently wrong with labels and diagnoses. Like, it's a matter of language, right? And just like anything can be empowering or disempowering, just depending on your perspective and how you twist it and how you reframe it. I think that in some cases it can be powerful because again, like I said, when I was, when I finally figured out I have BII, which is essentially, wait, what does it mean? What does BII mean? What does it stand for? I feel, I know what it is, but for some reason my brain is like, what does it stand for? When my breast, oh, breast implant illness. Thank you, brain. Uh, breast implant illness. So when I finally realized, okay, I have breast implant illness, I knew that my 
route of action, that the action that I'm going to take is to remove my implants. Otherwise, before, if I didn't come to that conclusion, I would still be in this confusion of like, why do I feel like shit? I don't know why I feel like shit. There's something wrong with me, but I can't figure out what's wrong with me, right? Or with the mold toxicity, like I can't lose weight. I have brain fog. I have this, that, and whatever. And so, oh, okay, now I have the action steps that I can take to mitigate it or to get rid of something or to dive into something more or to amplify something or to diminish something or whatever. Like there's tools that I now have. So that's the nuance here. But I am incredibly, incredibly grateful to my mom. I also truly believe that God would never give a brain to someone in the way that it's wired if it wasn't directly going to help them fulfill on their dharma, fulfill on their life purpose, and fulfill on their mission. And that's a huge lesson for me to see because I want to get into the five reasons why I believe that someone with ADHD can actually be an even more powerful manifester than someone with a more normal brain and not to like create separation or this is better than, you know, and this other person's less than, but just like to give the people who feel like this is a disability or this is like a disempowering thing. I want to show you that it's actually a superpower.